I mentioned, we are going to do a spiral Betty. Um, now, if you have done one of these before, don't spoil it because I think the effect is really cool. So I want it to be like a, whoa, look at what the, you know, look what we can do. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's we're basically turning a photo into a spiral that will then go onto this piece of acrylic board. Um, and I'm going to put the Spotify song code and the name of their wedding song underneath it. Um, now, in case I forget later, I just want to put a little quick disclaimer. Um, Spotify actually got very, very cranky um, because the little song codes became like a huge trend. Everybody was putting them on everything from car stickers to keychains to, right? And Spotify got a little bit cranky at that. Um, so if you, if they do find out that you're selling stuff with the code on it, um, you do so at your own risk. It's the same as selling Disney stuff and, and whatever else, right? You do so at your own risk. This, however, is a gift for a friend of mine, and that is why I'm putting their wedding song code underneath. Um, now, as far as the little music player SVGs that you can get, where it's got the name of the song and the artist, and then like the play, skip, repeat, and the the song time bar all of that you can you can put on that's not copyrighted but the actual codes that I'm going to show you tonight uh, if you plan on selling them you do so at your own risk okay um, as always everything that I use tonight including all the websites I will put in the description of this video at the end and then it will be down below on YouTube but the wooden stand came from laser blanks um, I actually have a friend local to me that cuts all of my acrylic for me, um, but you can buy the acrylic and the stand from Laser Blanks, okay? So the acrylic that we're using tonight is the 8 by 6 inch cut, and then you have to order the base separately, but basically, hang on, let's see if I can move you up. That's maybe that way. That's going to be what stands up at their house. Okay, um, so you do need an acrylic something um, to do this with. doesn't have to be acrylic. Um, I've done a couple of these spirals on like um, photo frames and stuff as well. Um, basically anything that you want to put the spiral on, but this is what I'm going with tonight. Um, you will also need, it is your choice whether you want to use adhesive vinyl or HTV. Me personally, um, I could never get adhesive vinyl to work. Um, and when we go to weed it, um, you will see possibly why I couldn't get it to work. It requires a lot of patience and a lot of coordination. Um, so when I switched to using heat transfer vinyl, I found that it was a lot easier for me to do these. So that's what I use now. I just have a little mini press, a Cricut mini press that I use, um, but a normal heat press like a Cricut heat press um, a like the pull down clam heat presses I'd watch your pressure because of the acrylic um, but I don't see why they wouldn't work or just an iron like a clothes iron um, will work for this project um, obviously you need like a Cricut or a silhouette or something um, I call all of this kind of thing a Cricut craft but I don't actually own a Cricut I'm a silhouette girl so tonight I'm going to show you how to do it in silhouette studio um, the idea of how to do it works exactly the same in design space but if you would like me to film a separate section to show you how to do it step by step in design space to add into the version that goes onto YouTube. Uh, let me know in the comments and I can film that for you and add it in when I go to edit um, the live to put it up. That's freezing. Um, I had my big puffy jacket on before I went live, but you know the two little things that were sticking out last time that was really annoying me? Yeah, I'm not, I learned from my mistakes. So I'm just here in my cardigan and it's cold. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, if you want me to film design space, I can do that for you, but I won't be going into that tonight. Uh, the only other thing that you need, which I forgot to get, is... Crash Bang Smash Acrylic Paint. I think I'm going to go mint green. Now, I'm making this for my friend Mel. Mel is local to me. She has a lovely husband and seven kids. A lot of kids. Um, so I'm making this as a gift for her if she is here. Can you say hello Mel? If not, this is what we're going with And if you're on later when we get to that part and you don't like it, I can change it 
Okay, so I'm going to switch over and you guys get to see behind the scenes for a second. So first things first, we want to bring up this website. This is spiralbetty.com. It's spelt the way that it sounds, okay? And when you get onto the website, it brings up this. Uh, and we need to start with a photo. So the photo we're going to use is this one. This is my friend Mel. This is her husband Josh. Everybody say hi Mel. I did ask her permission to do this live with her photo. I didn't want to just to, you know, one day be scrolling through Facebook and see her face on one of my lives. But you want to import your photo. Uh, this bar down the bottom here, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Right, I want it to be about there i reckon okay and it turns it into a spiral now we do need to make some adjustments i'm just gonna quickly go over comments hello everybody jumping on okay so first adjustment you need to come over to the right hand side here you've got all different colors right we want to go nice and simple with the black and white Okay, you do have a choice of doing spirals, that's lines, that's dots. Okay, but it's called a spiral betty, so we're going with the spiral. And then down the bottom here, you've got your settings. Okay, so I always like to bring mine up to about two thirds. Okay, uh, the contrast I do next, and I bring the contrast up until we start to see a picture forming the lightness always comes down a little bit right and from here i just start messing with it until it starts to look more like a photo and less like a hot mess no that's the wrong way To about there I reckon okay and once you have it looking oh that scale scale I don't really bother with because it right I've already cropped and zoomed to where I wanted it in that first part but that's what that does okay so rings lightness and contrast just keep playing back and forth back and forth until you get something that resembles a photo okay um, so we're gonna go this big download button clear background make sure that box is checked because then it's going to drag it through as what like an essentially a png um, that's ready to cut instead of something that you have to trace okay download and we're done for that part okay so now i'm going to go to silhouette studio hello here we go Yes, I prepared one earlier because these can sometimes be a bit of a bitch to weed. Um, so I made sure I had one that was finished weeding just in case I stuff up the weeding in the live. I'd still be able to finish the live. See, I, I guess who had foresight. No, I want to go out one more. Okay. So this is, uh, as I mentioned, I'm using an 8x6. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Christy. Hi, Kylie. Kylie, I did get your message, but I was putting the twins, getting the twins ready for bed. So I have not replied to you yet, but I did see it and you are very welcome. Um, six by eight piece of acrylic. So my workspace is now set to uh, seven by five and a half. Okay, because then that will sit nice on the piece of acrylic when we go to press it. So we want to drag and drop our spiral. going to turn that down so it's a little bit smaller maybe again. okay so I think we got up to where I just imported the image so we're going to open that back up again um Mel I see you're here hello you missed the beginning but my internet dropped out so we're up to you've been turned into a spiral whoop turn that down I hate the sound of I do I hate me on playback um, okay so we have imported um, 
Now, because this is, let's see if I can move it, as you can see, right, I've got my lines turned off, but if you were using Silhouette Studio, usually this would have a red outline on it, it's ready to cut, um, and as you can see, it is a transparent background, so we will recenter that, um, and move you up a bit. Now, the song that she had, they had, because you, I mean, you could marry yourself, but the song that they had was, it's Bless the Broken Road, isn't it, Mel? What is going on with my lines? Let's turn them on. There they are. Okay, so we'll fill that in in black. Uh, I'm going to use Dream Orphanage as my font because I think it's a really nice font as far as basics go. Um, basics like, like anything that's not, you know, script or has the fancy glyphs and stuff, I just call a basic font. But this is Dream Orphanage. Um, I think it's off, if it's not off Creative Fabrica, it's probably off the font, to be honest. Um, I'm going to right click world, right click group, and make sure that they're both centered. Now, to get your Spotify code, you watched it from the start, okay, you're all caught up. Christy, it's, um, we've been having some, it's just an old house, but we've had a couple power issues this year. Uh, the last one, everything in... Uh, my mum's room, the boys room, all that side of the house kept tripping. Uh, we actually had to get an electrician come out um, uh, to figure out what kept tripping the switch and it turned out that um, uh, I'd bought everybody in the house new electric toothbrushes and my dad's electric toothbrush, like the base, um, had actually melted into the power point. Um, and had like melted away and fused itself to inside the PowerPoint in their bathroom. So yeah, that's fun. Um, okay, so Spotify code. Um, if you didn't catch the beginning, again, um, if you're selling these um, and you want to include the Spotify code, you're doing so at your own risk. They do get a little bit cranky if you get caught. Um, otherwise, the other alternative is to make it look like a music player with the play button, the skip button, the repeat button, that little SVG. Um, but because this is a gift, that's what we're going with. So you go into Spotify and you find, bless this broken road, not the, let's fix that right now. Back, 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 this, there we go, nobody saw that, okay, so I've gone into Spotify, I've searched for the song, you want to go over to these three dots here, share, copy song link, and then you want to go to a website called spotifycodes.com, okay, nice and easy, you copy and paste the song link into there and click get Spotify code. It then brings up this bit. Um, if you want to, you can stuff around with this. I don't bother. I just go ahead and download. Okay, now going back to here, we now have our Spotify code. I'm going to trace this part because we don't want the black background trace now that's going to trace it with a box around it because it's tracing the black parts and not the white parts so all we need to do is go release compound path delete this rectangle around it select it all again right click make compound path and now we can go back and make it black make it the right size and squeeze that in there like that I'm gonna select all of it go up the top here and align it to the center and then the next button across is this little crosshair box that just centers it onto the page and 
that is what we're left with for our cut file. So what, um, Janine, that's your end this side. Bless the broken road. Where did I get this from? Oh, I saw that. So I did have it right. See, I shouldn't doubt myself so often. That's right, isn't it? Hang on. Yeah, I should have just looked at the copy I made before. Okay, there we go. We're good. Okay. <laughs> we got there. Okay, so um, if you were cutting it on adhesive vinyl, this would now be ready to cut. Um, because I'm doing... Yeah, I know I saw it. Thanks, Anna. Because I'm doing this as a HTV, I need to flip it horizontally so it's back to front. Um, because as you know, plain HTV, um, you have to flip before you cut because you put it, like you've got to flip it to put it right side round when you put it on the project, which will make sense in a second. Okay, so I would then now go and put that through the cutting machine. Um, I have, a, um, <laughs> I bought a camo for um, probably this time last year, put it away for myself for Christmas, gave it to myself for Christmas, have never taken it out of the box. So I am still using my three. Um, so now that all of that is done, I'm going to click this button and click this button and we're back. Okay. Hello, Linda. Yes, we're back. We had some electrical issues. I thought it was the modem. Um, like the, like my computer wasn't picking up the Wi-Fi. Um, so because I was too lazy to get up and walk to the other room, I called my mum and she said, yeah, hers had gone on a phone as well. And then we found out that all the power in the kitchen is gone. So, yay. Okay, so this is now my cut file on my HTV. Okay. So we're going to start with the easy part first. Going to go bottom to top. So that I can weed away from the text and the Spotify code and everything first. Make sure I'm in frame for you guys. I'm going to move that out of the way. Actually, what I'm going to do... Excuse me, mouse. I'm going to put the mini press on so it can start heating up. Does anybody... I know it's... <laughs> we, we were on such a roll so if it's a little bit hard to follow I do apologize tonight guys um, obviously I wasn't intending to fuck up but there's always something at least tonight it wasn't disastrous it was just time consuming um, does anybody have any questions hi Kylie we're back Karen <laughs> I don't, um, I mean, my excuse for why I haven't unboxed it yet is because I want to unbox it and use it once this room is properly redesigned the way, oh, the S came off as well, um, the way that I want it, um, because at the moment, um, all of my vinyl craft and everything gets cut out in the dining room, um, and I actually bought a table like middle of last year uh, to redo my room with and I just haven't gotten around to it because it means moving shelving around and putting everything in a box and unpacking it again I just can't be to be honest so it's still in its box because I don't want to use it until it's in here and I haven't done anything about bringing it in here I know a lot of people find weeding therapeutic, but it's got to be one of my least favourite things to do. I'm not going to lie. Um, if you like weeding, you'll love this, this project. <laughs> if you're like me, um, it's going to require patience. So if you woke up this morning and asked a god for patience... 
it's, you get what you ask for. Okay, so that part's all done. Now, I like to work from the middle out of the spiral because I find it easier. Um, if you're working from the outside in, you'll see when I was taking off all of the excess to begin with, it started weeding itself here. Um, you can go outside to inside if you want. I prefer to go inside to outside. Um, it just It's just how my mind works. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so I already started mine earlier today. So I would know which part of the spiral to begin with. Um, if you see, I have lifted this tiny bit here. Um, but if you're doing it and you've got your computer in front of you, it's really easy just to see like on your screen obviously you're going to remove the parts that are white and keep the parts that are black so have a look at the very middle of your spiral which part is the white part and then you should be able to start now the the trick to these um is to go as slow as you can and also treat it like you're waxing your legs right we don't want to pull up we want to pull across at as much of a flat angle as we possibly can pulling up because the strands of this project are so fine pulling up um, will actually rip it um, if it rips I'm actually gonna just move you guys down so you can see I'm gonna get nice and personal there we go is that better um, there we go now you haha <laughs> see now you can see um, pulling across like you would a wax strip um, is what is going to help. Um, if you do break your little string, um, it is you. It's simple to fix, um, but if you're like me and your eyesight's not great, it can be a little bit frustrating at times. Okay, so I'm just moving my. Yep, there you go. First break. My little bit round and round. I'm going to get my weeding tool. I'm going to follow where my gap is around to where I broke it off. There we go again. So now do you guys understand why I personally find this project easier with heat transfer vinyl? <laughs> um, I did try the first couple of times I tried doing these a couple of years ago um, when they were a big trend. Um, I was doing it with adhesive vinyl and I had to cut two, three of the same project before I could get it to work. So it can be frustrating. But like I said, I did cut, I cut two of this project. One I saved so that I could do it with you guys tonight. And the other one I pre-weeded just in case something, um, I didn't take into account my internet connection, but just in case something went horribly wrong, I'd still have something to finish off the project with. He's starting to see what I mean by patience. But can you see? Right, you can sort of see the faces starting to come through. <laughs> Look, it's not too bad. Um, like I said, I'm somebody that doesn't like weeding. So this going round and round and round, right? For the way that my brain works, it's a bit snoozeville for me. Um but the end result is worth it, 100%. Okay, so I just broke it, so I'm going round where my gap is with my weeding tool until it picks up the next bit. And away we go again. See? It's Friday night and I'm spinning tracks on me record, me vinyl record. <laughs> Ricka, Ricka. But 
is. Was it a play school song? Round and round and round we go. Spinning and turning. Was that play school? I can't see. If you can't tell, I'm com I'm coming out the other side of a horrible, horrible head cold. Um, and I still don't have my voice back. <laughs> I sound a little bit like Fran Fine. Um, so I can't think. But was that a play school song? Round, around, around. About halfway there. I am rushing. I'm aware that I'm starting to go a bit faster. Um, I just don't want to waste any more of your time than I already have tonight. Um... I don't suggest going fast, especially if you're not used to doing them. Um, a, because you will get a lot more breaks than what I'm getting tonight. There are some section where they're just, it's so fine that you've got no choice, right? It's, it's going to be a break in the spiral. Um, but if you do go fast and you're not used to doing them, um, you can actually accidentally, or you haven't cut deep enough, like if you cut dobs a little bit dodgy, um, you can actually lift up the wrong part of your spiral as you're going around. Um, which you don't want to do. Because then you end up with real big ugly gaps in your project. Don't ask me how I know. Almost there. We can do this. Let's see how I'm trying to keep my strand as flat to the table as I can. She's coming. We're, sad. We're starting to see faces. Does anybody have any questions while we're going around? I missed the bit on how you got the image in it. Um, that was in the first part. Um, that got disconnected. But it's a website called Spiral Betty, as in spiral, Betty, B-E-T-T-Y, dot com. Um, and you basically import your photo. It doesn't have to be a black and white photo. Um, it works best for outdoor photos um, because you get that lighting. And it's the lighting and the shadows of the um, photo that it picks up on to make the spiral. So you import your photo. Um, it turns it into, I think it's a teal and purple spiral, uh, it's a teal and something, um, and then over on the side of the website there's a bit where you can make it black and white, and then you just use the slide bars down the bottom, um, to adjust it until it looks like a photo. Um, I wouldn't recommend turning the lines of the spiral all the way up so that they're super thin. Um, I probably wouldn't push it past what I've done tonight at about the three-quarter, two-third-ish mark. Um, because if you can see, these lines are already really thin, right? So anything smaller than that, you're probably not going to get a clean cut. And if you don't get a clean cut, you don't get a clean image. And if you don't get a clean image, what's the point of doing this? The whole thing is for everybody to go, wow, look at that. Right? You sit it in like your lounge room and everybody comes over and says, wow, look at that. Where'd you get that? And you say, well, actually, I can make you one if you want. Right? A little, just a little bit of a flex in your lounge room. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. There it is. We're so close. Um, but is stuff like this 
Like, does it interest you guys? I know I do cups and stuff a lot um, for tutorials. Um, but coming up, um, you might be seeing a little bit more of me. Um, so if you'd like a break from, like, cups and resin and stuff like that, and you'd like to see more stuff like this with, uh, like, well, the, stuff like this is what I call cricket crafts, like I said, even though I'm a silhouette user, I call them cricket crafts. But basically, non-resin related crafts, is this something that you'd like to see more of? Um, because I do have a few orders coming up um, that aren't cups. Like, it's all stuff like this using vinyl or heat transfer or stuff like that. So if this kind of these kinds of projects are something that you like as well, can you let me know, please? Um, okay, so now we're going to move you back out of the way. Get all my little hairies out of the way. I don't know about you, but heat transfer vinyl makes me a bit paranoid because if you get a little bit in the wrong spot, it's really, really hard to get off again. It's not like adhesive. You can just pick it off with your weeding tool. Okay, so my acrylic. Uh, now, as I mentioned, you can get the 6x8 cuts in the same place that I buy my bases, which is laser blanks. I will leave the links for both... Um, in the video description at the end um, but I actually get mine cut by my friend who lives locally so mine actually has because this the acrylic that she uses is a little bit thicker than the holes that the stands come in um, she does engrave down the bottom for me so that it fits in okay um, but if you get your acrylic from laser blanks when you get your stand you don't have that problem okay so, first things first, I'm going to figure out sort of where I want to have it sitting. Oh, Josh lost his nose in that one. Where's the other one? I didn't notice that. this one poor guy there we go there was just two fine little lines that go down the middle that he was missing um first things first If we were using this side and I'd just taken the paper off, we wouldn't need this step um, because the paper is off on this. We need, this is what I'm looking for, spray it with some alcohol. Okay, now we're ready to cook with gas. Okay. What is that? Oh, I see. That. Okay. One day I will clean up this desk. So I was saying to Lindy the other day, it's almost to the point where I have to clean it because my elbows are getting in the way. It's not there yet, but we're getting close. Mel, are you still here? We're going to paint mint green on the back. Are you okay with mint green? Um, yeah, uh, Kylie, did you use heat transfer or did you use um, adhesive? Because I haven't been able to get the adhesive. I know when the trend first started, everybody was doing it with adhesive, um, with adhesive vinyl. 
I have never, even with, like, I got a brand new blade at one stage, um, I tried it with a brand new blade, I've tried twice, and both times was a waste of vinyl and time, and what very little patience I am given on a daily basis to use, and it just, for me, it wasn't worth it, but heat transfer vinyl, Here's a different story. Again, I'm not peeling up. I'm peeling away. Oh, no. I think I dodged up two of your lines, Mel. So if this doesn't press evenly, I'm going to make an... I'll just use the other one. Okay, let's try again. Yeah, just that little bit there. I love my mini press. Seriously, guys, if you don't have one um, and you like doing heat transfer projects, um, Spotlight has them on sale sometimes. Invest in one. I use it for everything from keychains to putting HTV on tumblers when I need to. Um, um, uh, so my daughter's just gotten into earrings. We were playing this afternoon with it. Um, and HTV on earrings, um, acrylic projects, makeup bags, hats, right? All of the little things that the two, I'm putting it on three because I don't know any other setting but high. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't use any other setting but the three so that's what we have isn't that cool i just think they're really cool okay so now that that is done the only thing that we have left to do is check the comments to see if mel said yes mint is okay Um, when I edit it, I will put it all together so it's all in the one video. Um, I will try and get that done for you tomorrow. Um, but for now, it is in the other part. Um, it's basically just a website called spiralbetty.com. Um, you import your photo into that. Um, I show you how to use the different settings to make the spiral. Um, and then you just import it into Silhouette Studio or Design Space. And away you go. If you wanted to, you could use it, use it, use it, leave it, leave it blank. I'm not going to. I need this. And because I was lazy the other night and did not clean my paint palette, tonight I am going to suffer for it. Oh, no, it's dirty. So we're going to use a baby wipe because we're very, very sophisticated people here. Put it on my left hand side. Sugar. Um, yeah, you can leave it blank. I'm not going to. Um, usually I give them a choice. Um, white is obviously very popular so that it's black and white. Um, pale purple I found is also popular. Um... Each to their own. But I'm going to go with mint green tonight. Yeah. 
using my foam brush and you basically approach it the same way that you would the keychains where you put um, the paint on the back right I want those brush strokes those antique looking right you can't see that's better right I want those antique looking brush strokes right you know the like you know what I'm trying to say like where you buy antique furniture and it's always got that farmhouse that's the word I'm looking for the farmhouse look okay which is why I use a foam brush I'm just gonna make the bottom a little bit more make sure I'm going out evenly on both sides now I have to swap my plugs over whoops sorry if you're wearing headphones my apologies my heat gun okay let's try this Okay, now I usually like to leave it dry naturally um, for the purpose of this live. I've just hit it with the heat gun, um, but I do like to let it dry naturally um, because I'm never sure how much heat is going to affect the other side. Um, I'm going to let this dry overnight to make sure that it's truly dry and then tomorrow I'm going to paint over it with the gloss varnish it's the same stuff that everybody uses for baubles but I'm going to paint over the painted area with the varnish just to seal it in to protect it a little bit more but that is now what we're left with Ta -da! so when I put it in the sign but in focus that's what we're left with what do you reckon Ta-da! isn't that cute it helps when the subjects are so photogenic but that can now be put up in their home or in their bedroom and that's that <laughs>